Voluntary carbon markets is one of the key mechanisms to fight climate change and to make net zero pledges real. In the nearest future, to be specific, in the nearest decade, voluntary carbon markets are expected to grow 15 times. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you who are the key participants of the market and how they are interconnected. Voluntary carbon markets consist of environmental projects that aim to either reduce greenhouse gas emissions that are already in the atmosphere or prevent new emissions from happening. And every ton of emissions reduced by the project creates one carbon offset or carbon credit. And carbon credits are tradable on the market. For the purpose of this video, let's imagine that you are a project developer. As a project developer, you're responsible for the project on all stages, from the idea to implementation. So basically, you're going to need, first of all, to decide exactly how the vision of the project looks like, where it's going to be done, how it's going to be done, who's going to need to participate to make it happen. You're going to need to develop business model, financial model, go to market strategy to bring project on the ground. You're going to need to decide what partners do you need to make this implementation. You're going to also need to decide if you want to implement it yourself, or you need someone to outsource the project to. You're gonna need to navigate all the efforts related to registering the project to make it an official participant of the voluntary carbon markets. So lots of things to be done and all this mess and all this chaotic but very interesting work is something that project developer does. In the world of carbon markets, someone has to make sure that projects entering the markets will generate high quality carbon credits and will cause no harm to local communities and biodiversity. And that's exactly what carbon offset programs do. The two most famous programs are Gold Standard and Vera. Just like other programs, they set standards that projects have to follow to be qualified as high-quality offsetting project. They also develop methodologies for each type of offsetting project. For example, that's how it looks like on the Vera website. Here you have multiple different project types, and for each of them you can find the methodology. Methodologies set out detailed procedures for quantifying the real greenhouse gas benefits of a project and provide guidance to basically help quantify the greenhouse gas emissions that were reduced or removed by the project. Additionally, each program holds the registry of projects to track the status of project approval process and credits issuance and retirement. Then there is also third-party auditors. These are the guys who, on practice, by their own hands, conduct verification and validation of the projects versus standards and methodologies developed by carbon offset schemes. Now a couple of words about what is validation and verification of the offsetting project. When you just decided to enter the voluntary carbon market, you're going to have to fill out project documentation in accordance with the templates and guidance that Carbon Offset Scheme gives you. Then, once it's done, the process of validation will happen. Basically, it means that third-party auditor will have a look at your project documentation, will have a site visit to see your project operations, and will have a decision if your project actually satisfies all the requirements to enter carbon markets. After the project has been registered and has been running for some time, project developer may decide, okay, now is the time to issue carbon credits. And to do so, you have to pass the step of verification process. By that moment, project developer has to prepare the report with actual amount of greenhouse gas emissions that have been avoided or sequestered through the implementation of the project. And verification process is basically the process of evaluating those calculations to make sure that they are correct. And in the voluntary market, this is usually the last step before the issuance and sale of offset credits. Very often, project developers, just to make their life a little bit easier, outsource the activities related to this formal part of registering the project, validation, verification, to a consultancy company. Consultants can help with other things as well. I mean, they can help you with the business model, financial model, they also can help set up the operations, but most often, or at least very often, project developers reach out to them to outsource this formal part of things, because it is honestly quite time consuming and it does require a particular skills to get the best results out of it. So once your project has started its operations and it went through the whole formal part of registering the project, validation, verification, everything, now the project can issue the credits and sell them. And credit buyers are the ones purchasing the credits. On voluntary carbon markets, this is typically organizations or individuals willing to offset their emissions voluntarily. 
On compliance carbon markets, these are typically governments or legal entities who are obliged to limit their emissions and they want to do so by purchasing offsets. Credit buyers can purchase carbon credits from the project developer directly. Or they can also purchase carbon credits from carbon exchange, for example. The voluntary carbon market is quite complex. It has lots of different types of the projects, methodologies, standards, qualities of carbon credits generated. And that's why buyers often have to choose very carefully what carbon offsets to buy to make sure that they invest in really, really high quality offsets. Carbon exchanges, they try to simplify this process. They bring traditional commodities trading infrastructure to carbon markets by creating a standardized tradable item. Another way to buy carbon credits is from carbon retailers or brokers. Carbon retailers typically use the approach which is opposite to the one used by carbon exchange. They collect carbon credits from many different projects and they typically sell them as different units with different prices. Typically, carbon retailers work best if you want to purchase a small amount of carbon credits and prices there are also higher than on carbon exchange, for example. Carbon brokers are good when the buyer wants to create the whole portfolio of carbon credits and purchase them maybe partially from carbon exchange, maybe partially from the retailer, but basically it's going to be diversified portfolio of different types of entities. Carbon markets have lots of differences from other more traditional markets, but one of them is a huge cash gap because from the moment you launch the project to the moment you receive first revenue from selling carbon credits, I mean, it can be up to several years. So to close this cash gap, you're often going to need an investor. Investors can be of many different types, and depending on the type of investor you choose, he can give you not only money, but also expertise of launching and running projects similar to yours, for example. And this is super valuable, especially if you are a new player on the market. Now let's check what financial flows connect these market players. As a project developer, you're going to have to pay to Carbon Offset Program fees for project registration and issuance of credits. You also, of course, have to pay to consultants and third-party auditors for their services. Let's not forget, this is the general way of how things work in the market, but there can be also other schemes. For example, consultants can handle payments to third-party auditors and carbon offset programs. Then, third-party auditors also have to pay to carbon offset programs accreditation fees and annual fees. Credit buyers have to pay for the carbon offsets. They can pay directly to project developer or this payment can go to carbon exchange or carbon brokers and retailers. Credit buyers also have to pay small account registration fee to a carbon offset program. If carbon credits of the project are listed on the exchange, then project developer has to pay fees for listing carbon credits and of course investor gives finance to a project developer. So this is pretty much the general scheme of how things work. Hope it helped you a little bit better understand the voluntary market. And if so, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.